to the king. Hallelujah. Our y'all, we do thank you for all things. Uh, we need continued understanding as we go forward, open our spiritual understanding to discern the signs of the times that we can be witnesses for the kingdom and to draw and convert sinners unto you. Speak to us your words of truth by the power of the Ruah in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you may be seated, Israel. Um, I don't know. I guess it's just on my mind, on my heart. I, I'm on, you know, the Bible, um, we're not going to be talking about this subject tonight, but I thought I'd go over here briefly just for a second so people can understand something. You know, the Bible talks about, um, can y'all cut me down just a little bit? It talks about covetous practices. You ever heard that before? Now, I know that Strong's has a definition and everybody has uh, ways that they define things, all right? But I'm going to go ahead and define what a covetous practice is so we can really truly get some understanding, okay? This may come from, this may come from um, uh, Dictionary Encyclopedia Dow, okay? But you discern and, and tell me if you uh, see if this fits, though, okay? All right? Covet this practices. First of all, I, I talk about this right here more, probably more than anything. Because this, this right here, meaning when you say mine, is connected to here. Now, I only point to these because these are what you see naturally. Does that make any sense? Mine, heart. They are connected. Are you following me? And I talk about the heart all the time. Are you following me? I talk about this heart all the time, along with this mind, all of the time. All right? Now, a covetous practice is a practice that you used to do. Are you following me? That now that you have, are now in the faith, you're still doing it. You have not been converted. Do you understand? So I give direction all the time to people. Um, one of the first directions I always give um, especially when you come this way, is to get out of debt. Well, ain't that what I, ain't that what I say? I'm not saying that because I, 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 I am out of touch. You understand what I mean? I'm not saying that because I'm out of touch, because I know living in America is inevitable that you're going to be in debt, especially since we didn't have any inheritance. Most of us didn't grow up with a silver spoon in our mouth. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. And when we got old enough, 18, 19, or whatever, you understand what I mean? Yes, um, we were out of mom and dad's house, and we start off in the world, and we had no choice but to go to the world and get what? Yeah. Debt. Yeah. And if we, didn't, if we did not learn how to navigate in the world, are you following me? We would find ourselves in trouble for a very long time. And it's designed to be that way. Yes, you understand what I mean? Um, I was, uh, how was I, 19 years old when I got married? 19 years old. 19 years old when I, when I moved out of the house, 18 years old. 19 years old, I was gone. All right? Eight hours away in another state with myself and Sister Carol. It was just us two. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Nowadays, uh, men... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, <clears throat> 29, 30, <clears throat> 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. They're still sitting at home up under their mom and daddy. And some of them are sitting up under their home under their mom and daddy with a wife and a family. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Are you following me? And so. If this doesn't change, then you're going to continue on with the same old practices that you grew up with. Does that make any sense? So when I say get out of debt, before I even moved on this community, I was out of debt. But I had to work to get out of debt. I know y'all find it hard to believe, but yes, I, I, I actually worked one day. Are you following me? And when we moved on this community, I know it's fine hard. I know it's hard for people to believe, but when we moved on this community, um, that was at one time we had close to seventy people living on this community. I bet y'all didn't know that, did you? 
I said at one time we had close to 70 people living on this community. Are you following me? And at that time, we only had mom and dad Dow and brother Shane and brother Doug Bell uh, that would actually work to bring in money. And I had the little bit that I would get in, all right, and that, that's what we took care of the community off of. Deacon Gaston had a little bit that came in, all right, follow me? and I'm not giving all the numbers, but it wasn't as much for 70 people. If brother, brother Rich, um, he would contribute when he didn't live on the community. He would drive back and forth, give an offering, a nice substantial offering every, every, every couple of weeks or a week. And when he lived on the community, and, and if we ever was really needing money, I would say, Brother Rich, I need to go get a job. Bro. All right, Pastor, he'd go, he go get a job. Are y'all following me? Yes, sir. Now, I will throw you this number. I did all that with less than $4,000 a month coming in. Yep. Yep. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. Less than $4,000 a month coming in, taking care of 70 people. And doing everything we needed to do on this community. You know how we could do that? Because we didn't have debt to go pay everybody with. Right. We could take the money that you would normally pay for debt and put it on this community. Right. Uh, yeah. And then times come by, people will come by. Sister Bob, when she moved here, moved here with a nice offering. And that stuff went up like a smokestack. But the majority of people, I would say 95% of the people that ever moved to this community didn't have anything. So when I tell you certain things, when I instruct you, especially those of you out there who are planning on doing community or at least moving out to, you know, to, in some form or fashion, when I tell you to do certain things, I may be speaking in suggestive terms, but I mean business. Because I'm only trying to give you information to help you. See, if I practice the same old covetous practices that I learned as a heathen, bought that over here in this way without any discipline, then we would have suffered as a community. Are you following me? And with those 70 people, I told you, there was eight or nine years on this community, we did not have no air conditioning, no building. Well, we've been here 16 years. You think we ought to be able to enjoy some fruit of our labels? We work our rear end off. Uh-oh. If you can't tell we ain't worked our rear end off, I don't know how these buildings got here. I don't know how these animals got here. The men work. The sisters work. We work. And we were one family. Of course, then over the you know, period of years, people, they come just like with regular churches. They come and they go. Right. Is that correct? Yes, sir. People come and they go. And of course, you know, the only reason people never leave nothing good. They usually got to have something, right? right? Have a reason yeah. Yeah. to justify yes, leaving. Yeah. Covetous practices or lust, lust of the flesh, something. But you would never leave a good place, would you? Oh, boy. Some of you can't answer because you left good marriages. Reason why the marriage wasn't no good, because you was in it. I don't care what nobody say. They can paint it all rosy. Every marriage has trouble. See, I'm a realist. I just tell it like it is and let the chips fall where it lay. If you get bruised, beaten, and battered, I don't see any blood. Your feelings may get hurt, but I tell you what, I think about your feelings. Put them out here. If you could transfer your feelings from your body and stick them out here, I'll show you exactly what I think about them. Because if I cared about your feelings, I wouldn't be preaching the way I preach. I'm trying to get to our minds. Because the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. And what, what is all we've ever done? Been conformed to this world, hadn't we? But be ye transformed how? And most of us, we, we know how to quote the scripture, but we've never done nothing about renewing our minds. Right. Yes, sir. That's, That's why you still see the old us. Same old way we've always been. How make any sense? So you've got to change everything about you. 
and everybody can't live here, and we don't want everybody to live here because most people are just undisciplined. Yes, sir. Come on. You can't be in the military without being disciplined. Right. You can't do it. And, and ask, ask the military if they care about your feelings. If they care about your feelings, you ever heard of boot camp? Yeah. Yep. I promise you, it's not open for discussion. No. <laughs> and the dishonor and disrespect, whew, boy, did you receive that. The stuff you think that, the way you think human beings ought to behave towards you. Come on. They must have forgot all about that because they call you every degrading disparaging name under the sun. Then they make up stuff on top of that. Yeah. And then they feel like they can't get to it. They just start talking about your family. Yeah. Come on. Yes, sir. Yeah. I had one guy comment today uh, on, on a video I did and, and one of the comments he had made was he says, you know, I ate pork. I ate a whole bunch of it. And next thing you know, my kidney's hurting, my liver's hurting, my gallbladder is hurting, everything else is hurting. I kept on, and you know what? Uh, and, and I finally got, I think I'm paraphrased because I can't get it all right, okay? He says, but you know, I finally uh, come to the realization after being so sick that I need to start taking care of my health and leave pork alone. What a revelation. What a revelation. But he said he used to really just stuff his face. would just eat it up. He says now he doesn't have all them health problems. He went on a detox. Are right, you following me? He doesn't have all them health problems. You know the reason why he continued on in that mindset? Because he refused to change his mind. See, no matter what's in that book right there, if it don't reach here to influence it, you'll never get the benefits of it. He never understand what optimum health is if you're going to continue to keep eating pork when the, the scriptures forbid you to eat it. When you grow up in a world where you are saddled with a religion that justifies you eating unclean things, you have no, no motivation whatsoever at all to change. And you need to understand, you grew up in America, the most spoiled, degenerate nation on the face of planet Earth. And you operate after that mindset. You need to know that because if you don't know that, you're going to continue to keep operating right. like that. That's right. And what you're going to do is be oppressive to everybody else around you right. except, except those who are informed. Come on. Preach. The mind is the heart. The heart has to deal with the mind. You understand? Yes, sir. And that's what the Father is trying to get a hold of us with. Now, I know we live in 2014. It's kind of hard to believe that people live without air conditioning. I wonder what they did before it came along. I had one guy um, last year wrote me, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. Y'all hear me? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not talk Put your feelings out here. Right. He lives up, up there in the Northeast. I don't know what I'm going to do. Heat and oil prices just so much. He's just off the chain. I can't afford it. I don't know what we're going to do. I just don't know how we're going to make it. I'm going to say something. If he's still listening, which I doubt it, he's going to get greatly offended. I didn't answer him. I did not answer him. I'm going to answer him now. What did people do 100 years ago? Before there was heat and oil. You ever heard of a thing called a tree? You ever heard of a stove? You ever heard of go outside, get an axe, work like an ant in the spring and summertime. Let the wood dry out, stack it up. Well, I got to work doing when you get home. Bring the wood in the house, get the fire going, put the wood in the store, and you can stay warm. That's a brand new revelation. You know why? <laughs> because we live in a society. Hey, it's cold here. <laughs> oh, gee. 
Ooh, ooh, Maybell, I thought we weren't going to make it. <laughs> yeah, come it. You know how much work, man? That's a stressful situation, brother. Excuse me for not feeling sorry for you. You get cold enough, I promise you, you will find a way to get warm. If you can't find a way to get warm, freeze. It's your choice and decision. It is. I suppose a hundred years ago, all they had to do was hey, shoot. Hey, 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 wait a minute, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. A few more minutes, we'll, we'll be comfortable in this place. Ah, I'll tell you, I'm finished. I, t- I, t- I told you, I'm on another plane. I'm in, I'm, I'm in another world. I, that Bible is, is the cause of my mind functioning the way that it does. <laughs> but we don't understand. Well, how in the world did y'all stay? Well, hey, believe it or not, we did have electricity. We put a we put a twelve dollar box fan in a window. But now as inflation here, they're seventeen dollars and eighty eight cent now. We put a put one over. It's blowing hot air. It won't be hot air all day. All, at night, by eleven o'clock, it starts cooling down. You mean to tell me we gotta wait till eleven? We gonna suffer? Huh? I can't, y'all, what we gonna do? Huh? Oh. See, even the child is like God. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. See what America's done to you? See what America done? But see, then, then. First of all, it's a love-hate relationship. You love hearing me, but you hate hearing it. Because everything I have to say means you have to get off your lazy ass and do something. And even still to this day, we do not have central heating in any building. <laughs> we learned something. We chop wood, we go get wood, we go to the place up here and pick up wood. Yep. And you know what we do? We get newspaper and a big lighter. <laughs> and we put it in a stone, we start a fire. Yes, what? In 2014? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Well, the heat and oil truck is going to stop one day. Just like all these semis that come to a grocery store near you. It's going to stop one day. And every, your social security is going to stop. Your retirement is going to stop. Everything you depend on in this world, y'all can't see it all coming to an end? It's coming right before your very eyes. Now if you are wise, you can look out and foresee evil. And you can stop preparing your house. And if you ain't wise, you, if you want to be wise, the Bible says, listen to a man that is wise. So that you may be wise. I just, it's just too simple, isn't it? It's too simple. We're going to get on here, okay? So, no, Pastor, I, I, don't tell me about what rough is. If you're going to tell me about all your trials and tribulations here in these last few decades, next time you come here, pull up a chair. We'll get some coffee or whatever made and some tea. I'll sit down and listen to all your trials and tribulations. 
I'll have Elder Doug and, and Brother Shane come over and sit down with me. We'll, we'll listen to you real good. Yeah. I had one guy, he wanted to move on the community, right? Come on, old saints. I don't know if I'm not making it. Come on. And this guy had $80,000. And did y'all hear what I said? He had $80,000 that he was willing to give on community, but he had already had a couple of demands. You know what they were? He wanted a refrigerator and some Coke. I got to have it. I told them brothers, I said, I said, that ain't worth 80,000 headaches. $80,000 is not worth 80,000 headaches. No, right. He didn't make it. I'd put up every roadblock in the world to make sure he didn't move here. I made life really miserable for him. Some of you, you'd have took the 80,000 thought about the headaches later. Oops. Not me. Yeah, the Nuh-uh. Because <laughs> you ain't going to come over here making demands what you got to have. What everybody else is sacrificing. Right. But you got to have a refrigerator mm -hmm. and some coke. Chances are he'd have got the refrigerator. I wasn't going to tell him, though. Right. Look at that. But we don't, we don't buy pop and put it out on the community. Right. If we do, we get something like, what is that stuff we get every once in a while? Ginger ale and um, Sprite. Every once I mean, every, if you get pop on this community two, three times a year, Man, I tell you what, we we made it to the kingdom. <laughs> look at look at him looking at me. Oh, never mind. I I can't do without my pop. Then later on, you know what happens, right? Yeah, they hear me. They want they want to come the straight way and they want us to miracle them some health. Now they've been biting of the fruit of lies all these years. Yep. There it is. How many times I told you stay, stay away from soda? Yeah. Yes, it's a poison. It's killing you. That's right. yes, now you choose to do it from there. Don't come here. Right. Wearing our sisters out trying to figure out what's going on with you. But you've been drinking two, two liter Pepsis. Right. Three of them a day. Right. <laughs> Y'all probably think I'm making that up too. No, we had a sister come here. They did that. How tall was Sister Ray Seal, Elder Doug? Five, two, three, or four, something like that? She one of them, wasn't she? Five, six? How much did she weigh when she came here? 439 pounds. And she was enjoying her Pepsi. Two or three of them a day. I went to a house to visit her. She had all these, what do you call them things? You had breathing machines, but all these cords all over the place from one room to the next. If you can make it to this room, you just plug into the oxygen tank over here. Then you walk over here and make it. When she got here, it's amazing because she made a drive from Virginia. She drove from Virginia to here and forgot her oxygen tank because she was just excited about getting here. She didn't know she was going to make it or not because she used to living with oxygen. We let her stay in our little guest room, right? She couldn't walk. You know that, that guest trailer right there, right? She could not walk from that guest trailer to my house. Am I exaggerating, saints? No, sir. That woman could not walk let me, let me put it. She could not walk from that wall to that wall. After one delivering session, one, she could walk from that guest trailer to the dining hall. After two delivering sessions, she threw away. Y'all still got that big old bag of drugs she got, she had? What y'all do with that thing? She had 20 prescription drugs in that thing. A big old bag of them. 
Second deliverance says she could walk, she could actually go to town with Sister Carolina and walk around. Hallelujah. And she was in the Christian church. And boy, you talking about wrestling a bear. We got some video on that one. And we got tossed around like rag dolls. I mean literally beat up. But we, we just want to get the devils out. She came over here feeling good. Went home feeling good. Did good for a while. Like some of you do. You do good for a while. You get away from the saints, all of a sudden you back off in the world again showing how small your spiritual strength is. Come on. Hmm? I, you, I'd hate to tell you some of the reports of some, some of the young brothers used to sit right here. Hallelujah. Glory to Yahweh. Huh? Ain't, ain't, can't, can't hit them. So deep off in the world and off in the sin. It's a mess, isn't it? Don't the scripture say, don't be too sure of yourself lest you what? Then they want to accuse me. Oh, you always boasting. Y'all make a boast of him. Sure do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sure do. I sure do. If you was a man or woman of your word, what you would do instead of reserving yourself from being bound by your word, you would speak the word sometimes so you can make sure you can keep your word so you can be a man or woman of your word. <clears throat> anyway, just so y'all know, we understand. So after about 16 years, I think we deserve to actually enjoy some fruit of our labors. Yes. And even that, we're still working. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. And we still don't have central heating. And we're conservative around here. You notice how cool it feels in this tabernacle? Yes, sir. That's good. We, we got some insulation ductwork stuff and put it up in the windows. Last year we was using aluminum foil yep. to get that radiant heat. You know, the window. Yep. What happens when you, you ever put your hand on a glass yep. when the sun is shining? Yep. If you don't know how hot it is, open up your car when you're sitting out in the sun. That's right. So if you get something to block it mm -hmm. and keep the heat on the other side reflecting stuff, you can enjoy this comfort right here. Oh, hallelujah. But anyway, <clears throat> I think y'all get the gist of what I'm saying. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because it really don't cost you all that like you think it does. Most of your lust has got you so deceived and so bound. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe this will help somebody out there, you know, since we don't understand. Tell us all about it. Glory to the king. Glory. Yeah, we do understand. Do we understand straight away? Yes, uh, young and old, we understand, don't we? Yes, yeah, we do. We live a set apart, sacrificed life every single day. So we understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. Well, you know we've been talking about Esau Edom, right? Yes, sir. What I'm going to do, now, now, don't get me wrong. I, I know I knew it was going to happen because people don't have patience. I, I, I told us last Sabbath that we're going to walk this history up in order to get an understanding. Are you following me? Now, I, I believe that Rome is Edom. But just like with everything else, in order for them to get Edom or to become Edom, there had to be a lot of assimilation. Does that make any sense? A lot of converting. A lot of um, um, infiltrating. Does that make any sense? A lot of infiltrating. But we ain't got there because we have to deal with history first. And we have to walk this thing up so we have a good understanding. Is that right? Because we can't go out here and believe what these, uh, you turn on the internet, there's a thousand teachers on Edom Esau and every one of them disagree with each other. So which one is it? <laughs> We're going to stick with the book then, ain't we? Well, why is it important to us? Well, I got a quick short study here, all right, to help us as we go forward, all right, to understand a few things. Is that all right? Yes, sir. To help us understand a few things. All right. Remember, in Better Sheet 927, Yahweh, look what he said. Yahweh shall enlarge who? Jephat. Is that right? Yep. 
and he shall dwell in the tents or in the houses of who? Shem. Shem and Canaan shall be his what? Servant. Servants. Now, all these are very important. All right? Every one of these are very important. Now, let's go over here and let's, just so you'll see that Esau is not the white man. See, because people are trying to tell you that Esau is a white man exclusively. That's not the case. Esau has many different forms and shapes just like Israelites do. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And y'all were made sure of it by making sure that everybody was all mixed up. Do people still have dominant genes? Sure they do. All right. Let's listen to the book. All right. Watch this. Now, remember we was dealing with, we're dealing with, Yahweh shall do what? Now, when you read the Torah and the Tanakh, you're not going to hear anything about these people coming into play until you read about Grecia. So for thousands of years, Japheth is nowhere in the picture. You hear his name, and he kicked the traces, and he gone. But you hear about Sham and Ham all the time. All right? Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Yafut. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Is that right? Now, the sons of Japhat. Now, we're going to find out. Because if Esau is Edom, we got a problem. Because from the very beginning, we're going, we know that Esau came from Shem. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, sir. Esau came from Shem. Are you following? That's just like saying, okay, all the, okay, Israelites. All right, all the Israelites come from Japheth. You know that ain't true. The Israelites come from Shem. That's the line that they came out of. Is that right? So we got some. We got to deal with some here. The sons of Japheth are Gomer. And Magog, and Media, and Yavon, very important. Yeah, this one right here, very important. But these are the sons of who? Japheth, isn't that something though? Look, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Taras. Look at this. And the sons of Gomer is who? And the sons of Japheth are, is? And the sons of Gomer is? And the sons of Japheth is, and the sons of Gomer is, and Rephla and Togoma. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. So Japheth, one of the sons of Noah, Ashkenazi. Are you following me? They're not Shemites. Does this make any sense? Hebrew lexicon, 813. Ashkenazi, foreign order because they're going mini minute. They put a question mark because they want you to, to cast doubt upon your mind. A descendant of Japhat. That's pretty simple. We just saw it in the scriptures, didn't we? A northern people, perhaps of who? Britannia, which is Britain. How hard can that be? Ashkenazi. Who was Esau born of? Genesis 25, 19. And these are the generations of Yishak, Abraham, sons, Abraham's sons. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethulah, the Syrian, and Partaram, the sister of of Laban, and that word Laban is actually translated white. The Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren, and Yahweh was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, did what? Conceive. So Yahweh heard Isaac's prayer. Is that right? And the children struggled together with her, and within her, excuse me, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto her, 
two nations. Two nations. What does the Bible deal with? Nations. Doesn't deal with skin color. Deal with nation. Well, you like it or not, you're American. You're in this nation. You're born over here on this land since by conquest, conquered, you're still an American. Two nations in our womb and two manner of people. What, two manner of what? Now wait a minute. How can it be two manner of people when they both come from the same mother and father? That's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? And yet y'all loved one and hated the other before they were born. Wow. Y'all getting the language? Shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be for delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Born of who? Isaac and Rebekah. Maybe two nations, but they're still Shemites. When you hear the Bible talk about the Hittites, the Moabites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Hivites, all these are nations. Y'all hear me, Israel? All these are nations. All right? Look. And so Esau was born of Yisak. Is that right? Who just happened to be a Hebrew? Is that right? He's also the progenitor of Edom. But Shem is black. J. Fuck got news source for you, got a news flash for J. Fuck was also black. At this time. Are y'all getting this? You got to be dumb. To believe that Noah and his wife had three boys. And one came out black as tar. The other one came out brown. And the other one came out white. Hmm? I wish I could show, I wish my, no, I don't wish. I'm going to use it as an example. I got a little brother, he number a little devil anyway. But I got a little brother after the flesh. All right, that's, that's the second brother right there. That, that come out of their loins. Right, that would be a good example of Sham, Ham, and J-Foot. Because he's dark. I'm a brownie. And my other brother is just like my dad, light red. Isn't that something? They go know they go know on mama, mama know. Isn't that something? Right. Well, and as a came out like this, all for the work of the ministry. All of them came out along three different shades of color. I just did, oh man. Sham, Ham, and Jeff Fight. They go Ham, they go Sham, and there's Jay Fight. Wherever he is, could be Esau. Matter of fact, he is Esau. All right, Esau. Prophecy. All right? We know that these are the geographical locations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That these, each one of these progenitors hell. Is that correct? Yes, now listen to the book. Deuteronomy 28 verse 47 says, Because thou servest not Yahweh thy Elohim with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. This is to the Israelites who just happen to be Shemitic. They're Hebrews. Okay? Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, Yahweh's the one who's doing this, but he's using a people to do this. And these people have certain identifying marks. These people just happen to come from the seed of Japheth. Are you following me? Who at this time definitely could also, by the, all these centuries and all these conquests and conquering, 
you better believe that there's some Edomites in there somewhere. And for what I can gather, a lot of these Edomites are in the, the movers and shakers of the globe. And they are many shades of color. Deuteronomy 28, 49. Now, that's jumping way over here. We're going to try to stay the course right here, all right? Yahweh said, bring a nation. Yahweh was going to do what, Israel? Bring a nation against thee from what? Far. Far from the ends of the what? Earth. Earth. As swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not what? Understand. The Moabites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, all of them understood yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. They all understood each other. Yeah. That was the common language of the, of the Hematic and the Shemitic people. Right. So it's got to be talking about these people that's coming from Japheth. Because they did not understand their tongue. Period. Oh, yeah. Are you following me? This is a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Remember, he's talking to Semitic people. All right? Israelites. And look what else identifying Mark. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the persons of the old, nor shall show favor to the young. You know that's the white man. The way he is plundered every single land he's ever touched and the way he has raped, robbed, murdered, and killed without mercy. That's his nature. All you got to do is look at the history books. It's just, that's just the way it is. That's why y'all would call them a fierce, a nation of fierce countenance. Prophecy. Look what Daniel said. The ram, which thou sawest having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Remember, because Media and Persia, Persia was in the rule before Grecia came. I mean, yeah, before Grecia came. And look at this. Not, uh, Daniel 8.21. And the rough goat is the king of who? Grecia. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Y'all hear that? First king. That's why we need the book of Maccabees. Daniel 8, 22. Now, that being broken up, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand out of, out of the nation, but not in his power. Four kingdoms? What are they four kingdoms? Them four generals. They came out of Alexandria. That's why he had to know history. And look at this. Key. And in the latter time, of their kingdom when the transgressions are come to the full a king of what kind of countenance? Fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. You know speaking in riddles and terms deceitful ways and all this other stuff. And his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and, and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Who's doing this? Grecia is. This making any sense? The Greeks are doing this. And through his policy, also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. Yeah. We want peace. How are you going to get it? We're going to come blow your whole country side up. We're going to have it no matter what. But whatever it is it's going to take, we're going to drop an atomic bomb, a nuclear bomb. We're going to get it. Peace. How is America making peace? By starting war with everybody. Yeah. Hmm? So by peace and in the name of peace, look how many people have died. I'm of the mindset, leave nations alone. Let them work out their own stuff. They just have commerce and trade with each other. So if you stay on your side, I stay on my side, and just leave each other alone. You got somebody want to come and be a part of the nation? As long as they receive the law, statutes, and commandments, have fun. But don't come over here and bring your idolatry over here, because then we have to kill you. <laughs> Look at them. And killing is not a sin. I just got finished making a YouTube video on that, believe it or not. 
Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not kill. And I put a question mark. Y'all see it later. <clears throat> so look how many people have died all in the name of peace. How many times we heard the prophecy says peace and safety, and then after that, what? Sudden, Sudden destruction. destruction. Bottom line is, and, and all you people out there that are sensitive, our white folks don't get all offended because they white. And the black folks don't get all offended because they black. In, in case all you people out there are appalled and beside yourself, and you never. Well, I never. I can see why. Jeez. That's America for you. That's straight up America. But the bottom line, when you look at history, these white folks are fierce. They are fierce as hell. Now, suppose you didn't know that about you. How would you know how to begin to work on your spirit? Hmm? I told you. There ain't nobody more rebellious than the Israelite. We taught the nations how to do it. We told the nations, oh, you got a God? I can show you how I can piss off Elohim more than anybody. That's why we're in the condition we're in. Because of disobedience. Ain't nobody more rebellious than the Israelite. Ain't nobody more fierce than the white man. Period. History proves out both. All right? And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of the princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Listen to the book. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of times? Good question. Or when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of it that followeth. All good questions. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. He's answering. For Esau is the end of the world. Does that make any sense? You don't think we're at the end of this thing? Oh, yeah. And watch this. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The kingdom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who's going to be ruling? It's telling you who's ruling in the end, who's going to be ruling in the beginning. Right. Of the new millennium. Is that making sense? Yes, That's pretty simple, isn't it? You have to deal with this by nation. Revelations 2 9 says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. This is Yahshua Hamashiach talking to John on the Isle of Patmos. Yes, but thou art rich. And I know the blaspheme of them which say that they are Jews. Who's doing that today? Come on. Who's doing that today? These Israelis? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. The seed of Japheth? The seed of Japheth. I know the blasphemy of them say they are Jews and are not. Don't Christianity believe that they're Jews? They are Jews, but they're just not Yehudims. They're not Israelites, they're not Hebrews. But they are Jews. He said, I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews, they are not, but they are of the church of Satan. So all these Jews in the world are Satan worshipers. Every one of them, any one of them claimed to be a Jew is a satanic devil worshiper. Come on. I don't care how many times they pick at the wailing wall. I don't care how many bar mitzvahs they, they say and have. They are the synagogue of Satan, period. Yep. Well, this is the word. Can you believe the simple word, brother? Just sit right there. Can you, you can't dress that up, brother Darrell. Look at that, brother. Now you're gonna sit and wrestle against you're gonna wrestle against the most high. That's right. That's right. Come on. And you got every religion in the world trying to be just like them. Right. Yeah. What a mess. And can't even believe the words of the Messiah. Right. Beginning or end. Yeah. Well, I see, I, I'm so simple, I read that and I go, okay, good. I believe it. I know who the devil is. Yes, sir. I know who the devil is, I know who's ruling, I know who to watch out for. Right. 
I told you, the devil said, can't beat them, join them. And remember what the apocrypha just got finished saying. For Esau is the end of the something has done took place. Like I showed you last Sabbath, Israel wasn't the only nation that went off into captivity. There were nations that intermingled with Israel that went off into captivity with Israel. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So we know them that say they are Jews, they are not, but the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 3, 9, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are what? We don't ever call ourselves Jews. Why well, we say we're Hebrews or Israelites? Yep. Yes, sir. Huh? There's what tribe you from? Pick one. Let your conscience be settled. Pick a tribe. Because right. truth is, you don't know. You know. Now I know. Why? Because I picked it. There it is. <laughs> I'm from Judah. Now, I could be a Benjamite. I could be a Levite. Come, uh, come on. I could be a Yehudite, couldn't I? That's right. Which one is it? Now, just by selective deduction, I know which one picked the right one. Because when you look at history, yeah, Judah consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You thought I was just saying just Judah exclusively, didn't you? And they're scattered everywhere. And the Israelites are scattered everywhere. It didn't say, it, it said to the four corners of the earth. It just didn't say to the Americas. <laughs> ah, mercy. But see, when you get out here and get tired of with all these false doctrines, I keep telling you what they do is they play on your hate, your bitterness. Yeah, they do. They got to stir up that anger and light that fire. Why do you think the why do you think you know you know the, the Islam that's here in America, they don't even recognize it over there across seas? They think Farrakhan them a joke. These, these people are making up stuff as they go. I'll tell you how effective is that brand of Islam, the nation of Islam is. Malcolm X made a pilgrimage over to Mecca, came back and said, Man, I'll be damned. <laughs> I seen Muslims of every color. I seen white, I seen black, I seen everything, man. Guess what? I'm out of here. And then what did the nation do? Took him out. So don't tell me, yeah, get your head out of my pocket. Thank you. I'm sorry, folks. That's the nature of the devil, what they do with the apostle Saul when he found out that he wasn't a Yehudi. Or a Jew like they said he was. Right, right. They put him in prison, persecuted, and then what? Killed him. Yes, Same ones that killed him aside. So don't, tell, don't, don't be playing with me about this. That's why the people don't want to debate, Elvin. I got some very one of them. Every single one of them who are twisting, warping, and distorting, and deceiving the minds of the people. See, since I ain't got nobody down here that's on our side, we got to be on y'all side. We making enemies on everywhere, everywhere but him. The most I said, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say that they are Jews and are not, but do what? They're liars. They're liars. The Khazaris are liars. All of them are liars. They're all liars. They're lying. That's why I say the Messianics, you are liars. Y'all see why I'm hard like? Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Ain't that what the prophet says? Is that not what the prophet says? Now, we can understand that kind of talk because that is, he had already spoke to the prophets and told the prophets what was going to happen. These folks are going to dress our fields Hallelujah. and cut our vines. 
And I'm going to tell you, at least we got to worry about toe jam in the kingdom. Stamp them grapes. That's right. Give me some wine. Yes, sir. That's right. Oh, no. yeah, Christianity ain't going to talk about it. They're going to give you these big Jack Bent enemy fairy tales. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Bent imp. I will make them to come to worship before thy feet and to know that I have love who? When it's all said and done, the Father going to show Israel, I know you. I know who you are. Yes. And I'm going to make all these imposters. Let, I'm going to let them all know. Yep. Every single one of them know that I have loved you. Hallelujah. Y'all getting this? Yes, sir. There's that passage in Jasper again. Yeah. Esau was a designing and deceitful man. You can't get no more deceitful than America. Who's, remember I said the black man was ruling in the beginning. You know, of this cosmos. The white man is going to end this thing. All you do is look and read the prophecies of Daniel. He's going to tell you who's ruling. And then Jacob is going to rule in the kingdom. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. It's, it's really that simple. The symbol is black and white. Jesus. Malachi said, as speaking from the voice of Yahweh, Yahweh gave him others. I have loved you, Israel, and Yahweh, and say of Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was he not? In other words, was not Esau a Shemite? Did he not come from Isaac and Rebekah? Did he not? Yes. So he was a Hebrew. Sure. So Edom is not Jephat. Right. Come on. I bet people are. Like, That's hurt my mind to think like that. We're going to get to all that. All right, we'll, we'll get to all that right now. But we're going to stick with the order of things the way it is. We got to stay right here. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said Yahweh, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage the ways for the dragons of the wilderness? Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. That's some back talk, isn't it? Thus said Yahweh, of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And everybody said, well, how, how y'all going to do it? He's going to raise up a nation. Yep. Come on. Yes, your enemies. Yep. And he's going to use your enemies to whoop your rear end. Yep. Like he always does. Yep. Let me give y'all a little history before I finish reading this. Yes. You see, in the midst of all that, remember we was talking about um, uh, the kingdoms. And, and all the kingdoms that was assimilating with the Israelites. Yes, after they would have all these inside wars and factions and stuff. Before the Romans, even while they was outside uh, compassing um, all of Jerusalem. Are you following me? You know that we was in there fighting each other, killing each other, and murdering each other, and couldn't even come together as a people. And the Edomites was helping us to fight the Romans. And then John and Simon... Both who were fighting each other, Simon the Edomite, John the Israelite, fighting each other. You know what they end up doing? They end up begging the Romans for food. And then the Romans still end up killing both of them. Ain't that how we always destroy each other today? We have all these in wars and in fighting, and then the cleanup crew just waiting for us to get finished decimating each other. Tearing up each other. There you go. Because somebody always want to rise themselves up and think themselves something when they're nothing. And they see my application and delivery of ministry. They think, well, I can do that. This ain't done by man. Well, I see you. There go your carnality. That's how stupid you are. 
Y'all said, my sheep will hear my voice. And the spirit voice has a certain voice. Now, you're, if you don't remember, I'm going to refresh our memory. Moshe, tell Yahweh, don't talk to us no more. Because if he talked to us, you know what's going to happen, don't you? And he didn't talk to us as a nation again. No, he talked to the prophets and the prophetess in isolated places. Go deliver my word. So when Jesus came along and said, my sheep hear my voice, how you think you're going to hear his voice? I'll, I'll give you something so simple, even a child can understand it. And he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. What's happening? You hear him preaching because some of you, you're so, you know what it is? You're so cardinal. You look at a man preaching. And you think that everybody's reaping all these accolades and stuff, even though they love me, right. yes. up on me, but it's his voice. Right. Oh, because hallelujah. by the time that word gets to everybody in here, his spirit hits everyone yes. where they need to be hit at. Exactly. Yes. Hallelujah. His spirit does. Hallelujah. He's the only one that I know in the whole entire universe and all the cosmos of the whole entire whatever you want to call it. Yes. That can speak one way and everybody can understand. He showed it on the day of Pentecost. Yes, sir. You got all these nations. And they spoke in tongues. And how hear we? Isn't that something? And see, we don't get it today because we refuse to understand spiritual things. That's the reason why when I preach, people are attentive. Yes, sir. Because that's called the anointing. Hallelujah. Then I sit here trying about to break their neck. <laughs> because there's anointing behind it. Hallelujah. Y'all has their attention. Yes, sir. Uh, Hallelujah. Didn't y'all spoke to us by the prophets? Yes, he did. That's what he said, right? Yes, sir. He spoke to us by the prophets. Yes, sir. And in his last days he spoke to us by his son? Yes, sir. Yeah, he did. And his son said, I'm going to send you the comforter. And when I'm going to give it to you, you ain't got to worry about what you're going to say. I'm going to tell you what to say. And I'm going to put it all together. And you know what else is going to happen? You're going to be hated of all men. For what? My name's sake. Before I came to this, I was a, everybody loved me. Come on. Preach. Everybody loved me before I came to this. I, I could, man, I was, I, I could get along with people. Right, right. I was fun to be around. All of a sudden, man, you are preach. I'm like, pff, pff, pff. They bring guns to church. They call the Department of Human Services on my family. Yeah. On me, they try to destroy. It. Hallelujah. And you shall be hated. Hallelujah. Of all men for my, my. my name. Hallelujah. See, before conversion, I, I was a likable guy. Yeah. Life of the party. Come on. After conversion, oh, we hate that nigga. Yeah, straight up. Yep. Can't stand him. Glory. What'd he do? Preach. Tells the truth. Come on. Messiah know what he's doing. I told you he's setting us all up. Yep. You don't believe he's setting us? Look at Stephen. That was in our day called a good death. See, you women, you're okay. Men, you're going to get killed. Yes, sir. Women, you're going to get raped and probably some of you may die, but they're going to take you out to other kingdoms and stuff and rape you some more. Right. That's what they do. Yes, sir. That's what these nations do. Yes, Warriors, they're going to kill you. Yes. True. Because also the history book said after they had already sacked Jerusalem and stuff, and, and all the, the boys that were 17 years and younger, they took them into slavery. So if you don't mind, I want to do everything I can to teach us to stay close to the Father. I'm tired of getting my rear end whooped. Is that okay? I'm tired of being in bondage. I, I'm tired of being the tail. I want to be the head. If it's all right, I'm tired of the cursings. I want the blessings. Is it okay if I preach for a while? Is it okay if I teach for a while? Will you allow me? Does this make any sense? 
So y'all took a bunch of misfits, every single one of us, yeah. Come on. and turned around and wrote our name down in his book Hallelujah. and made us children of the king. And you don't think I'm grateful and thankful? Man, I'm going to run hard as I can. Yeah, I am too. I'm going to run hard as I can while there's breath in my body. And I don't care if you like it or not. It ain't open for discussion. Does that make sense? I'm grateful. I'm a thankful servant. Oh, by the way, they shall build, but I will throw down. Notice, who said that just a minute ago over in Malachi? Huh? Who, over in Malachi, one for, Edom said that. Huh? And they shall, and they shall call them the border of what? The border of what? So these Israelis are the border of wickedness. Can we believe what the Messiah said? He's trying to talk to us. And the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. I thought I was reading Revelations again. And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, Yahweh will be magnified from the border of what? Israel. Y'all get anything out of this? Y'all get anything out of this at all? Yes, sir. Huh? Did you? Learn anything? Yes, sir. Some light bulbs should have went off. Oh, yeah. As simple as this was. Yes, A little 30 minute teaching here. Should help us in the understanding here. Yes, sir. See where we at? Well, we, you should be glad that you're children of the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. That's what you should be glad of. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And maybe some people go and spy on our liberty. Come over here and listen to this, and then they'll kick all the rest of these other play. Man, them folks crazy. Yeah. Y'all encourage. We're gonna go on just for a little while to give y'all some good understanding, all right? Because you never know how many people you may need to help out of this. Because a lot of people are, are in bondage to false doctrine. Now remember, Paul had already told the people what was going to happen. He said there were false prophets. Were false prophets among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. And they're going to be teaching things that they ought not for a reason. For filthy lucre's sake. Just to make gain, merchandise of you. Don't care nothing about your soul. All about them. Now, if I was really looking to garner favor amongst the people, don't you think I could dress my application up just a little bit better? I mean, polish it up real good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be a little bit more lover double, a little bit more kind. You know, you understand what I mean? Stop being so abrasive when I'm preaching. Could, could, could I do that? Couldn't I just walk around squint-eyed like Joe Osteen does? <laughs> Go get my teeth bleached. <laughs> huh? And take God love you. <laughs> Sorry. He got it right. <laughs> And people pay thousands of dollars to get fleeced. Let me give y'all the secret out to all you people that are offended. The reason why the people out there that are listening and here are listening, the reason why they don't get offended is because they don't take it personally. And because, see, offenses will block you. Yeah, they, will, they will impair your hearing. So if I'm talking about Jezebel, you know, we got an old saying. If you take a rock and, and you throw that rock off into a pack of dogs, and mind you, the subject is Jezebel. And don't tell me you women ain't dogs because the Messiah said you were dogs. 
He said, it's not me for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. <laughs> so you want to get mad at somebody, ignoramus? Look at him looking. So don't sit up and tell me I'm insulting you. I'm insulting the spirit that's in you. And when you're in agreement with that spirit, you'll get insulted. That's, right. that's why I keep picking up more rocks and throwing them. I just keep on nailing them, boy. Just, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Y'all ain't figured out what's going on yet. You ain't just about it ain't gonna hit you. I can throw all the stones I want that day, it won't hit. But boy, if I, that word coming like a hammer. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? At least you're getting some deliverance. You're crying out with a loud voice. <laughs> All right, let me go. Okay, before I get started on Jezebel. Are y'all getting it? Oh, yeah. So anytime his word hitting you, it's, it's designed to do that. Yes, sir. Glory. Last thing I want to leave you with, all right? Our problem in this generation is this. We insulate ourselves from conviction. Because we, 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 we equate conviction as something against my person. You know, if, if anytime we feel conviction, we feel like our person is being come against. Right, right. And we have to insulate and protect ourselves from that conviction, which you're actually what you're doing is despising the chastening yeah. of the master. Right. That's right. That's right. Come on. You are. And instead of acting like sons, you act like a pack of bastards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't let the devil think that I'm against you. Now I'm against you, but I'm not against you. Y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. I am against you, but I'm not against you. Yes, sir. Hmm? I'm against that old evil wicked man that's always trying to rise up. So I have and Jezebel, I'm going to keep on throwing stones, waiting for you to bark again. Why would a woman want, why would, it, why would a wife want to disrespect and dishonor and talk back against her husband anyway? I ain't figured that out yet. Hmm? Anyway, got to be Jezebel, right? Let us stand. Y'all all right? Y'all learn anything? The children know that. Hey, I learned about picking up rocks and throwing them into a back of the dog. <laughs> and they go, ah, ah. Abba Yah, we thank you for all things. Pray to these sayings. We sink deep down in our hearts. Thank you for the Ruha HaKadosh. We glorify and magnify your name. Thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We bless your magnificent name. Continue to minister to us and give us utterance so that sinners will be converted. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, amen. Shalom, King coming. Y'all be encouraged.